Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on an updated Dragoonie deck list for 2017. Basically, this is going to be the first deck list for Dragoonies I'm going to be putting out in 2017, the first deck profile in 2017 of this deck. And it is my favorite deck of all time, so it's why I always keep going back to it. But basically, this coincides directly with my Ultima Zulkin combo tutorial video that I put up a little bit over a week ago. And basically, the capabilities of performing that combo are what's included in this deck list. Now, I do have multiple variations and versions of Dragoonie lists floating around, but ultimately, this is one of the more stable ones and one of the more like steady ones in terms of it hasn't been changing a lot, and I've really been liking the results I've been getting from it in terms of my ability to solitaire combos and stuff like that. So ultimately, I'm putting this out there because I feel like it's at a good point to put out there, potentially get some feedback on, potentially inspire some ideas for you guys to use, as well as also to just see if people want me to play this deck for potential upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro videos or not, or maybe even some IRL duels, which I'm definitely considering working on and doing. But anyway, let's jump into the deck list. Basically, there's 18 monsters starting with triple ducks because this is standard. If you play any less than three ducks, then I have no idea what you're doing because you obviously don't want to combo off. Uh, but one copy of Zephyros, I'm not really liking two, but whenever I do swap it up to two, I usually take out one of the Garudas to support it. Um, but as of right now, I'm really just liking Garuda as an extender a lot more than I'm liking Zephyros. So that's why it's at two and Zephyros is at one. Just because Garuda is a bit more potent in what it allows you to do, as well as Garuda allows you to access Zephyros off of your Gate Egg plays if you do get to it. But Zephyros does have the benefit of being a really strong one-card opener with Ravine to allow you to do an Atom Red Med play. Even though it is the weakest of the variations of plays, it is still just a two-card combo versus all the other three-card combos and, and above. But basically, a Triple Mistleton, I feel like this card is mandatory at three until we get three Ravine back into the format, and even then it might still be mandatory at three. This card is just incredible for what it does for the deck. It's an amazing extender. It's like the best extender um, for your combos, as well as it is a pseudo-starter card because Ravine, like, Ravine-less hands with just Phalanx and this in them is still a level 8 Synchro that you could potentially back up with Traps. Uh, so ultimately, it's just an amazing card, and I don't think I would ever play less than three of it until we get three Ravine back into the format, which I don't know why we don't have yet. But anyway, that's a story for another day. Uh, one copy of Darkness Metal, because this card is amazing. This is like one of my favorite monsters in the game's history, period. It turns all of your Dragon Synchros into floaters because they constantly are recurrable, and this has legs itself. It has a body that it can attack with, which is not small by any means. 2800 is a, is a very big number, and it's always been a huge number in the game. Um, but basically, if your opponent is forced to deal with this after dealing with your monsters, or else your monsters are just going to come back that they just dealt with. Uh, so it's ultimately a really strong card. And I feel like this card could actually go to higher quantities on the ban list at this point. Um, and if it did, it would definitely probably be included in its higher quantities in this list because it is just that good to be able to spam through them. But carrying on, triple copies of Phalanx because this is really standard. I don't know who you'd be talking to if they told you it wasn't because, I mean, you must not be trying to combo off, I guess. Uh, but then carrying on, there are two copies of Miss Valley Baby Rock. This was a card I was always very iffy on in the past. Uh, but ultimately, it seems like I've just basically gotten over my, uh, my dislike of the card's ultimate design. Because it just really does a lot for the combo potential. And it's almost an auto-inclusion into any list that I build at this point. Um, and ultimately, I feel like three is a bit too many. Uh, right now, I'm really liking it at two. Some people play one, but I feel like two is a happy medium. Especially considering some other cards that are in this deck list. But... One copy of Amorphage Goliath. I'm not playing Lechery. I am just playing Goliath, though, because you can turn almost any of your, like, Atom combos into Queen Dragon Gin and either Stardust or Crystal Wing plus Goliath. Um, and that's actually just really strong. Basically, once you have, like, Queen Dragon Gin, Stardust, and Goliath on board, um, which is out at 0-0, zero, zero, but it's being protected by battle from the Queen Dragon Gin, your only out in the game for your opponent is a Kaiju straight over the Goliath. And so, like, that's that's very, like, situational. It's basically putting your opponent under domain and trying to keep them there. And that's actually just really strong. So I do really like this card as a one-card inclusion because it is basically an engine trap that you can summon. But, like I said, I'm not playing Lechery for the anti-spell thing because I feel like those combos are way too, like, uh, hit or miss. And it's very wishful thinking trying to draw all of that in the same hands. Uh, but at least with this, you can actually draw this card and you can discard it mid-combo off Gaydark. And then bring it back from Grave off Red Med. You can discard it off Ravine, bring it back with Red Med to have it like be huge. Um, but even if you don't do that, you could obviously just summon it out of your deck off of the secondary Atom in your combo strings, and uh, and it would be just as good there. But last two monsters in the deck are some defensive cards in the form of two Maxi, because uh, when I don't go first, I'd like to draw those cards potentially. But spells. Two copies of Dragon Ravine, because for some reason every like deck in the game is getting good field spells and has good field spells, and this is a decent field spell. It's definitely been overshadowed by everything else that's come out, 
But for some reason, those cards are at three, and this card is still at two, and it's been at two for a year and a half. And I don't know why. And I would like to slip my wrist now, please, because Konami, please give me back my favorite card at three, because, I mean, it helps percentages a lot, and I think I think we need those percentages if we're going to try to compete with this really already underwhelming deck and basically the format. But, I mean, the common potential is really big, but, I mean, still, like, that's no reason for you to keep this deck down. I mean, Dragon Rulers are banned, man. I mean, you brought this card back when you banned the Rulers. Then you put it to two on the next list, but then it's been, like, four lists since then, and you haven't done anything to the card. It's been at two, and it does nothing. But anyway, whew, enough rambling. Uh, triple Terraforming to play five Ravine, because five is still not as good as six. Um, basically, <laughs> but because we do not have chicken game either, because Konami banned that card, we have to supplement consistency somehow, and that is going to be done with Triple Pot of Desires. Now, this is by no means a budget deck list at all. Uh, Pot of Desires is a card that I really heavily enjoy playing, even with like one of them in the deck, like Red Med, Goliath, and Zephyros. You can put those back off Omega, specifically like talking about Zephyros or Goliath. Um, if you like, the chances of you banishing all of them at once are very like are very minor. As well as your chances of banishing your ravines are very minor, as well as the fact that you could just terraform for a ravine before you activate this card. And drawing multiples of this card isn't really that big of an issue, because of the fact that you do have a card like Ravine that is a built-in discard outlet in your deck. Meaning that you can discard multiple copies of this card if you do draw them, but having it at 3, you're going to see it, you want to draw cards, you want to get to that 6 card turn 1. And then for other cards that say draw 2, double cards of consonants. Now most people don't like to play cards of consonants in a list with only 3 tuners, but I feel like it's fine enough because of the fact that you can support good hands with this. Um, you can discard Baby Rock mid combo off of Gaydarg and add another Phalanx to hand and then cock it away. Um, so like, there's there's multiple different things that you can do uh, with this card that actually supplements like just making it really good in my opinion. Especially since you can like combo off and like I said, like add Phalanx, discard a Baby Rock to keep your combo moving, but then you can discard the constant sit away and try to draw trap cards to support your board. Um, that's also just like really strong. But anyway, keeping going. Three copies of Instant Fusion because the Ravine Flank Instant Fusion combos are actually just really, really strong um, because of Norden. Like, it's just, it's no way to, it's, there's nothing else to say about it. Even if Norden gets banned, you can just swap it out for their Mavalus, um, and it's still just as strong. So, like, it's just a, it's a wonderful extender for the deck, and you need those. Um, and then one copy of Soul Charge because this card is literally just game. This card makes incredibly insane boards, even without Triple Omega, like I did in that video. You can still Omega them once and then make like Crystal Wing, Stardust, Goliath, and Red Med. Um, and it's absolutely uh, like ridiculous. But for the last two spells, one Foolish and one Upstart Goblin to bring the deck down to 39 cards and help with consistency even more because we trying to draw a Ravine. But there's only six traps in the deck and they're all really good quality ones. Two Vanny's Emptiness, uh, two Dragon's Bind. I really like this card, um, especially since like you can summon like Goliath out of deck at zero zero and then dragons bind on it or you can summon red men out of deck at zero zero and if you're not able to bounce it like if you banished your zephyros off desires or something you're able to make like queen dragon gen or something based off like an instant fusion play there's there's multiple different things you're able to do but to gain like maximum amount of value out of this card by like a red med that's at zero zero or a goliath that's at zero zero and you're able to dragons bind it hell you can even put stardust out and dragons bind it and at that point your opponent has to have a board wipe or like a very saucy destruction effect to negate this, to like force the stardust negation just to turn this card off but like it's just another copy of vanity's emptiness and so it's actually just really strong but the last three traps in the deck are triple solemn strike because this card is just incredibly powerful and i really like how it applies with uh this deck because it allows you to out establish boards with it um as well as other things like i think this card is just a little bit better quality for this deck than a, a card like dimensional barrier would be since you already have stuff like goliath and um and your dragon's binds and your emptiness uh, basically like this just forms an additional protective layer on your goliath or whatever soft lock you're doing but going into the extra deck one copy of crystal wing one copy of cypher and lord omega one copy of scrap dragon for removal and one stardust dragon there's no Stardust spark dragon in this deck list although i do want to include it but the deck list just the extra deck is not big enough basically but uh one coral dragon for the ultimate zulkin play uh one gator triple vajrayana i have actually to con like contemplated cutting this down to two to make room just because there's almost no combos where you actually summon all three in the same combo string. But, I mean, it does come up infrequently enough for you to have to have a follow-up play. So, I guess it's it's important enough to include. But then, one Ultimae Zulkin to be the last uh, Synchro. Because, I mean, that's the entire purpose of playing the Coral Dragon. As well as Coral Dragon is another piece of spot removal. Meaning that you could actually potentially cut something like Scrap Dragon. But Scrap Dragon is summonable off of your Ultimae Zulkin. So, like, it's really, it's a conflict of interest. Maybe Scrap will be swapped for something like... Beals are more high impact level 8 that's still summoned Wolf Ultimaya. But there's only one Instant Fusion target in the deck because the extra deck is not big enough, and that is Elder Entity Norden, just because it's the better one over Mavalus. Um, now, you do have the plays where like Instant Fusion Phalanx come up, 
um, and you need Mavalus there, but ultimately there's enough other extenders in the deck that hopefully those don't actually come up too often. As well as the fact that any hand like that is just infinitely made better with Mistleton in hand as well, if that's there, because then you're able to go Ravine Phalanx, or you're able to go Phalanx, Mistleton, Instant Fusion for Norden, and that's still like a Zulkin. So like there's there's like different things like that. But anyway, the Fork Seas in the deck is uh, one Ptolemy, M7, and there's two Atums because you need it for the Goliath combo. And then there's a Queen Dragon Gin for the uh, support for the Goliath as well. Basically because Goliath is a win condition if you're able to summon it. And it's an inbuilt engine win condition. So like that's something that I really wanted to support. Uh, definitely more than like other niche cards like Mavalus. And so that's why these are in here. No Gaia Dragon uh, because I don't find Piercing to be overly relevant. Especially if you're able to like... Because most of the time you're banishing a Tom off of uh, Darkness Metal to be summoned back anyway. Um, and there's ultimately other things and factors as well, like the fact that like you can just summon Scrap Dragon and pop off an Atum that's used its effect. Like leaving Atums on the board that can't attack is very rarely an actual like issue that comes up uh, for you. But anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this deck list in the comments down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you love what I'm doing? Do you hate what I'm doing? Do you think my videos are trash? Do you think my videos are great? I want to know all this sort of stuff in the comments down below. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description to my Facebook page as well as my Patreon. If you want to support me directly, you can always go there and consider backing me on Patreon. There's a monthly giveaway that I'm doing at the end of every single month as well as the potential for you to get onto my personal Discord server to play with me, chat with me, whatever, on unrestricted basis. But if you want to definitely check that out, feel free to do so. And if you want to consider supporting me directly to help make some things like live streams and better equipment and better segments and stuff like that happen in the future, if you basically just want to support me in the best way possible, then definitely go there and consider doing your thing. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, as I've already said. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.